Hi, my name's Drew and welcome to another short review roundup. Cue the music. Today we'll be talking about three things. We've got two films and one TV show. Uh, those three are Red Notice, Netflix film, Encanto, a Disney film, animated, and then we've got the Disney Plus series Hawkeye, which is in the MCU. If you want to jump ahead to anyone in particular, you can use the bar at the bottom of the screen or there are the chapters in the um, description down below. But uh, the order I'll do this in is I'll talk about Red Notice first, then we'll do Hawkeye, and then at the end we'll do Encanto. So Red Notice, in case you don't know, it's uh, one of The Rock's new films. It also has Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot in it. Uh, obviously there's a lot of promotion material with those three in. As you can imagine, three very big names. You know, they do draw in quite a crowd, there's no doubt about it. It would be very interesting to have seen how much this film would have made if it had come to cinemas. Uh, I myself am not too convinced because uh, while I'm not too big on sort of dumb action franchises like uh, the Fast and the Furious or so, uh, I'm not quite sure if this one really would have brought in that much money because it is pretty much the most generic thing I have seen in a long time. I will say I like all three of them. They do also have very good chemistry on screen. That is one of the very big plus points of this film. You have wonderful set pieces and good action as well but the dialogue was just so silly really it was so bland there was there was not really much interesting going on in this film uh, you were just watching the screen seeing all the typical things that you're used to in action films i don't think it really tried to do something new while that is fine to me it's just not enough to really entertain me a lot so <laughs> that is how i would sum up the film it's got a, obviously it's got some good humor in it yes and like i say the chemistry is a big plus but overall, it's just a very, very generic film. So if you're looking for a popcorn flight for a Saturday where you're like, you know, I just want to be entertained, switch my brain off, go with Red Notice if you have Netflix, of course. We move to Disney Plus's Hawkeye. I was actually looking forward to this because I feel that uh, Clint Barton for a long time has deserved his own film in the MCU. Now that they're focusing a lot on shows, I think it's great that he's getting a whole show dedicated to himself. I am just overall not a big fan of what the story was here because by the end of it, I'm not going to spoil it, but I felt that this whole situation, the whole plot of the show could have just been avoided if Clint Barton had just said, you know, it's actually not my issue, I'll just go. <laughs> he could have left from the start because the whole issues that arise in the show are simply because of him wanting to get involved. It's quite silly, really. It's all about his Ronin costume that we saw in Avengers Endgame and I think he could have just taken it, went home and that would have been the whole thing. It's really, it's really weird in that way. So I feel that they could have given him a better story in that sense, although I like that we get to explore more of his family dynamic, we see the ties that he has to his family. I also like that we get to see what the effects of the superhero life are on normal human beings because we see Clint Barton, he has got a, a hearing disability which makes sense from all the explosions and all, everything that went on over the years. So I really like that we're exploring that side as well because he is obviously not super powered so these things take a real big toll on his body. And that bit I did like. I also like Kate Bishop. We are introduced to this new character. She was saved by him in the original Avengers which we see now, we didn't see that in the film. But, uh, so she just, you know, fat, is a huge fan of him and is an archer herself and it's obvious they're setting her up to be the new Hawkeye, that's quite obvious. But I feel that they made a great choice, I really liked her character. The chemistry between the two is also very entertaining. It's just the plot I felt really was weird. And besides that, uh, the villain in this thing is it's done very short, it's rather towards the end, they stuffed it really full of stuff. There's a lot going on, particularly in the last two episodes. I think they should have drawn it out maybe a bit more, maybe added an episode or two just to flesh it all out. So it all happens towards the end, we're stuffing it full of things, setting up countless things in the MCU as they tend to do. And then it all just stops really, really abruptly. So I wasn't a big fan of that, uh, I must say. Uh, the setting itself, New York, I do enjoy these, these sort of more down-to-earth stories where it's just about humans without having hugely superpowered beings. I really did enjoy that aspect of it. 
It's just that I felt that they should have tried something very, very different. Humor-wise, it's also good because we have scenes where you get groups of LARPers involved and it is a lot of fun <laughs> watching Clint Barton getting involved in LARPer battles with swords and, and armor and stuff. That was very enjoyable, I will admit that. So overall, while I'm glad he finally got his own show, I'm not too sure about the execution. One more funny thing uh, that I will mention is they've got, uh, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of musicals, but they've got one musical number in here that's about the original Avengers film, it's the fight in, in New York, and I love that sequence, it was just so funny just watching the whole thing, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm really glad they inserted that, so there's some really good humour in this. The last thing we're going to talk about is Disney's Encanto, and I realised that I hadn't seen an actual Disney film in a long time, every time I thought I was watching a Disney film was actually Disney Pixar. I realised this with Encanto because I had forgotten just how much singing is in your typical Disney film. <laughs> and while the singing is beautiful and the music is great, uh, it is a bit much for me, I will admit. Uh, so I don't think you need songs quite so often in films. But I get that that's Disney's model, that's what they've been doing for ages, so yeah, that's fine. Encanto itself is probably one of the most beautiful films I have ever seen, so the colours in this film are just amazing, I really love that, the animation is wonderful as well, so high quality, uh, it was just great to watch what, what was happening on screen. I wasn't a big fan of the plot I will say, what it's about is we've got this magical family, every member of the family has some, some superhuman ability I'll call it, except our main character and the story is about her showing everyone that they're worth more than just their one superhuman ability. That was so generic, so predictable, and I'll be honest, it was just boring. Uh, it's like we've seen this before in many different ways and iterations. Uh, I, I just wasn't a big fan of that. I didn't enjoy that. I think they could have gone somewhere really interesting with this uh, premise because we're used to having superheroes, etc. But here we have abilities that aren't necessarily even good for fighting villains and battles, so I think they could have done a sort of supernatural, superhuman story without having these battle elements. They could have shown what they do here is how they can enrich society, how they can help their neighbours, etc. I really enjoyed those aspects of the film. I just thought that, like I say, this moral message was just a bit bland in that way. Also, I'm not quite sure it's set in Colombia and with the magic, etc. <laughs> The, the, the adult in me was like, was like, is this an allegory about cocaine, uh, you know, the cocaine business and the Pablo Escobar and all these things? <laughs> Obviously it's not, that's a, that's a silly joke to make. But I really enjoyed the setting. Uh, I, I'm not a Spanish speaker, but I always, I always enjoy, enjoy uh, films, shows, etc. with Spanish elements or South American elements, all these things. I really like the vibe that you get off these films and that's done really great here. It really makes you want to join the family, so I love that. So a great magical film that you can enjoy with the kids in particular. Like I say, just look at it on screen. These colours are really amazing. So I really enjoy that. Uh, look forward to seeing more Disney films in the future with just the level of animation. Just hope for my sake they'll have a few less songs in them. That will be all from me today. Thank you for joining me for this short roundup. Uh, like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, it's the best way to support the channel and I'll see you in the next video on Flying Vina. Take care.